Hello friends, I welcome you in lecture number 5 on counting. In this lecture, we are going to discuss another counting principle which is known as the sum rule. We have discussed in lecture number 1 to 4 about product rule and we know that how we can apply product rule in some counting problems. Today we are going to discuss another counting principle which is the sum rule. So before going for sum rule, we just recall what is product rule. So suppose we have some task set T uh, which we can do as combination of two different tasks T1 and T2 or we can uh, do our task T in two subsequent tasks that is to perform task T we must perform task T1 and task T2 and suppose the number of ways of doing task T1 is N1 and the number of ways of doing task T2 after task T1 is performed is N2 then product rule says that the number of ways of doing task T is product of these two N1 and N2 so here uh, we are interested in the number of ways of doing both the task here we have this type of situation we must perform task T1 and task T2 to complete the task T so we can say that this N1 into N2 gives us the number of ways of doing both tasks here it is necessary to perform both tasks T1 and T2 so the number of ways of doing task T1 and task T2 is N1 into N2 now what is sum rule so in sum rule suppose we have two tasks T1 and T2 suppose task T1 can be done in N1 ways task T2 can be done in N2 ways and here we have one extra condition that we cannot do both the task at the same time T1 and T2 cannot be done at the same time when we are performing task T1 we cannot perform task T2 and when we are performing task T2 we cannot perform task T1 so suppose T1 can be done in N1 ways, T2 can be done in N2 ways, then the number of ways of doing either task T1 or task T2 is nothing but addition of these two, N1 and N2. So we are taking addition of number of ways of doing task T1 and number of ways of doing task T2. So this N1 plus N2 is the number of ways of doing task T1 or task T2. So this is the difference between product and sum rule. Here we have AND type situation. Here we have OR. Here it is necessary to perform both the task T1 and T2 and uh, we are multiplying number of ways of doing both the task to obtain the number of ways of doing task T1 and task T2. So this N1 into N2 gives us the number of ways of doing task T1 and task T2. Here we assume that task T1 and T2 cannot be done at the same time and if task T1 can be done in N1 ways, task T2 can be done in N2 ways then the number of ways of doing task T1 or task T2 is N1 plus N2. In other words, we can say that the number of ways of doing at least one of these two tasks is N1 plus N2. The number of ways of doing at least one of these two tasks, T1 or T2. So in some rule we will have this type of situation T1 or T2 in product rule we have we must perform T1 and T2 to complete the procedure. Here procedure can be completed by doing either T1 or T2. So 
the number of ways of doing t1 or t2 will be equal to addition of number of ways of doing t1 and t2 and here we are taking multiplication so this is the reason why this is known as product rule and this is known as sum rule so here i have written the statement of sum rule for two tasks if a first task can be done in n1 ways and a second task can be done in n2 ways and this extra condition and if these tasks cannot be done at the same time this is important when we are writing the sum rule we cannot do both the task at the same time either we can do first task or second task so if this task can cannot be done at the same time then there are n1 plus n2 ways to do one of these tasks that is the number of ways of doing task t1 or task t2 is n1 plus n2 so we understand this with the help of example there are 18 mathematics measures and 325 computer science measures at a college first part a how many ways are there to pick two representatives so that one is a mathematics measure and the other is a computer science measure in part b how many ways are there to pick one representative who is either a mathematics major or a computer science major so you can compare part a and part b in part a you are asked to find out number of ways of selecting two representatives such that one is a mathematics major and other is a computer science major in part b you are asked to select one representative which is either a mathematics major or a computer science major so you can concentrate here here we have two representatives and here we have and and here we have one representative and here we have or type situation so part a can be done using product rule part b can be done using sum rule so first we define two tasks one task is to select a representative which is a mathematics measure another task is to select a representative which is a computer science measure suppose that t1 is the task of picking a representative who is a mathematics major so t1 is for mathematics major t2 is the task of picking a representative who is a computer science major now there are 18 mathematics measures so uh, we can select mathematics measures in 18 ways and there are 325 computer science measures so task t2 can be done in 325 ways so that we have written first task t1 can be done in 18 ways t2 can be done in 325 ways now we consider part a in part a we are asked to find out number of ways to select two representatives so that one is a mathematics measure and the other is a computer science measure so in part a we have uh, we have to do task t1 as well as task t2 so first we do task t1 that is we select mathematics measure as a representative so that we can do in 18 ways similarly second task is to select a computer science measure so that we can do in 325 ways and to select two representatives we must perform t1 and t2 in a sequence so this is the product rule in part a we have to apply product rule so we have to multiply number of ways of doing task t1 and task t2 so the task of picking two representatives can be done in two subsequent tasks t1 and t2 therefore by the product rule there are 18 into 325 equal to 5850 ways 
to pick two representatives so that one is a mathematics measure and the other is a computer science measure so in part a you can uh, think in this way in part a we are asked to find out the number of ways of doing t1 and t2 so because we have and here we are multiplying the number of ways of doing task t1 and task t2 so whenever it is uh, asked that find the number of ways of doing task t1 and task t2 then we have to apply prolog rule simply if we have uh, we have to find the number of ways of doing all the possible task then we have to apply prolog rule or simply you can remember if you have this type of situation this and this then you have to apply prolog rule in part b you are asked to select one representative who is either a mathematics measure or a computer science measure so here we have this type of situation number of ways of doing task t1 or task t2 t1 is select a representative which is a mathematics measure who is a mathematics measure sorry and t2 is the task of selecting a representative who is a computer science measure so uh, we have to select only one representative so that representative can be mathematics measure or that representative can be a computer science measure so we have to find out the number of ways of doing t1 or t2 so for this we will add number of ways of doing t1 and t2 t1 can be done in 18 ways t2 can be done in 325 ways therefore the number of ways of doing t1 or t2 is 18 plus 325 so in part b uh, we should write in this way the task of picking one representative can be done in either of these two ways the representative is a mathematics measure that is task t1 or the representative is a computer science measure because we have to select exactly one representative so that representative can be a mathematics measure or he or she can be a computer science measure so we have this type of situation t1 or t2 therefore by this sum rule there are 18 plus 325 which is 343 possible ways to pick one representative who is either a mathematics measure or a computer science measure so this is very easy you can apply sum rule if you have two tasks t1 and t2 t1 can be done in n1 ways t2 can be done in n2 ways and we cannot do t1 and t2 at the same time t1 and t2 at the same time are not allowed then the number of ways of doing task t1 or t2 is nothing but sum of n1 and n2 and this is known as sum rule this we can generalize for more than two tasks also in that situation suppose i have t1 t2 t3 up to tm suppose i have m task and uh, they can be done in n1 n2 n3 and so on n m ways then the number of ways of doing at least one of this m task is nothing but sum of all these tasks n1 plus n2 plus n3 and n m so we have to add all these possible tasks so this is the number of ways of doing at least one of these m tasks is given by sum of all these n1 n2 up to nm so we will discuss uh, this extended version of sum rule in upcoming lecture so this is all about this session i hope you like it thank you very